So here we are with the anemone. Hello, I'm Michael Cottingham, and welcome to Tiger Talks. <laughs> uh, this is a buttercup family member. This is a classic buttercup, Ranunculaceae, uh, the buttercup family. Ranunculaceae, the genus anemone. This particular species is tuberosa. The, actually, the tubers of anemone were the official medicine. The eclectics never really used the aerial part. They preferred the tubers, and especially of anemone tuberosa, which are these tiny little, they, they remind me of little canagre or canagre roots, the little red dock roots. Um, they're elongated tubers, and, um, and some of them, out of curiosity, in, in good years where there's lots of anemone, I'm just like, how big do those tubers get? And sometimes they're two, three inches long, half inch in diameter. Um, you know, and I might incorporate a tuber or two, because it often happens to me. I'm out picking a lot of anemone, and I'm breaking off the tops, and occasionally the tuber comes up. The plant sometimes is delicately anchored into the soil, and a tuber comes with it. So use the tuber as well. It makes the medicine a tad bit stronger, and was it a fit, was the official medicine there for, uh, well, since they started using anemone. It's easy to recognize with these buttercup flowers, okay? This is anemone tuberosa, no doubt. But anemone tuberosa is our main species spread throughout the Just southwest. Uh, anemone uh, patens, oh, or okay. pulsatia patens. Okay. Uh, the name pulsatia and the name anemone have been swapped around. Um, you know, they are. You know, I guess to this date, there are two different genuses representing the same, really the same plant. Pulsatia patens or anemone patens. I still see it listed. Um, I think of it as the genus anemone. Another name, a former name that was very common before anemone was pulsatia for the genus. Anemone patens, anemone cylindrica is one I get up in the high mountain meadows in July in Colorado and northern New Mexico, like the alpine meadows. You know, I kind of look for clusters. There's so much of it coming. I look, I, I survey the area and look at the little babies that are going to be blooming next week. And when I come in, I'm actually, this is what I'm harvesting. I reach down and just pull them up and they break off. I pretty much do it barehanded, you know, and uh, give myself two pounds limit. And then I've got to take a break and go do something else on another mountain range and maybe come on the way home, pick another pound or two. <laughs> you know, hot, sweaty days, barehanded, you absorb a lot probably absorb 50 drops worth of the medicine mm, that's yeah the dosage range of this fresh we use the aerial the above ground part um, tubers if they happen to accidentally come up incorporated a little bit um, the dosage range of a fresh plant extract which is the only way to use an enemy because the pulsatic acid and perhaps some of the other constituents are gone upon drying Minimizing your touching out here will allow you to perhaps, I mean, some of you are very sensitive. Some of you might actually have a, a, a true allergic reaction to too much exposure of it. You might have an adverse effect. effect. They do say that, um, you know, the dosage range of anemone tuberosa is of a fresh plant extract is one to 10 drops up to three times a day, meaning you have like 30 drops that you can consume in a day's time without adverse re effects for most people. It's, it's one of those plants you do one or two drops and evaluate. You do another drop or two and evaluate. Up to ten drops. And then wait a little bit. An hour or two. And then you can start again one to two drops at a time. You're gonna, you'll find for your personal use or when you communicate this to other folks, you emphasize one drop at a time. Agoraphobia. Let's say you have agoraphobia. Let's say you're taking an enemy tuberosa for agoraphobia. You're, you find that five drops before you go to the grocery store makes you greet your neighbors with a smile, makes you happy, doesn't make your heart race, makes you comfortable, you feel good in your body, you're not scared. Maybe you're, This is a great medicine for introverts who can't stand and be around other people. 
There's an emotional body side effect that if you take too much, whatever thing you're working on, whatever tape loop you're trying to dissolve, whatever fear you're trying to overcome, whatever anxiety you're trying to diminish, you're going to get it ten times backwards if you take too much a minute. Good to keep in and that, I mean, how do you express that for a person? That's why I say take one drop at a time, stay within the dosage on the bottle, emphasize that, emphasize that. Anemone is listed, the genus anemone is listed as a poisonous toxic plant in many books. Straight up, plain and simple, not even considered a medicine by a lot of herbalists. They don't know how to work with it. Nobody sat and talked with them. They've never picked it. They never made medicine with it. They, they never were they, all they read was like, oh, it's a poisonous plant. We can't really use it. And uh, it's very distinct. Well, Leanne, uh, <laughs> who is a pharmacist, who is a pharmacist, she was in class last year. And she's also uh, not only an allopathic pharmacist, but she's also a trained homeopathic pharmacist. Yeah. She, she uh, asked her to speak about the homeopathic aspects of an enemy. And one of the things that stood out um, that was like people sometimes take the, the homeopathic remedy of an enemy for the feeling of being like they feel like who's ever felt this or come close to feeling it or who can understand it. You feel like you are the last person on earth because you don't feel like you can relate to anybody. Yeah. Right? So she described this thing and I was like, oh my gosh, it sounded sci-fi like you were, like you woke up in a bed and there was nobody left on earth except for yourself. This forlorn, empty, abandoned, by yourself, like loss, you know? Uh, she described it so beautifully and I was like, wow, this is profound. This is like, uh, and an enemy in the extract will help you you know, one drop of that might allow you to overcome fears and phobias and actually be able to feel like you're coming more home to the human family. For problems where the other herbs, you can't figure out another herb to use. You can't, nothing's clear enough. You know there's some emotional stress, there's physiological problem going on, is this person's exhibiting, but nothing clear, you know? And it's just like, for years and years and years, I, you know, I used an enemy for very specific things. I used an enemy for helping people with anxieties, anxiousness, people who are mentally trapped in a tape loop. They thought about this problem over and over and it kept them up. They couldn't sleep, they couldn't eat, they couldn't do and function in life. They just kind of like, maybe for 10 minutes out of the day, they, are, they, are, um, they can do something, activity, some normal activity, but boom, they start thinking about it again. And boom, they just nothing, you know, they just get, they're stuck in a mental tape loop. Used an enemy to help break that. Used people, used an enemy with people to help people uh, step away from um, um, narcotics, from marijuana, from tobacco, from drugs. The, the, the anxiousness and the mental tape loops that arise from withdrawals. You know, for those of you who have ever been addicted to something um, and you're trying to step away, what's, what, there's, that's all you think about, right? You know, it's, it's all you think about. It's like, where's the tobacco? Where's the coffee? Where's the whatever, the opiates? Where's the, where's the weed at, you know? And it's like, it dominates your mind and, you know, and it's just like, it plays over and over and over and it creates anxiety and anxiousness and you just start to, get, you give in because you just can't function. You can't do chores. You can't like, you can't, you know, until you get that, get back to them. And it can also be work workaholic you know it can be it can be emotional it can be like you're scared to be alone so you always got to be in a relationship um, you know and uh, whether it's good for you or not and and you know and it's like you're terrified to be alone and you just play this tape loop and tape loop over and over and and uh, you know and it's like if you can break that cycle by yourself an hour two hours be in your body without the t any of these kind of anxious anxiety tape loops playing over and over. It's the beginning of a, of a chance of getting out. That's why I say take one drop at a time, stay within the dosage on the bottle, 
emphasize that, emphasize that. Anemone is listed, the genus anemone is listed as a poisonous toxic plant in many books. Straight up, plain and simple, not even considered a medicine. So, I mean, that alone is amazing. Anemone should be in every, like, like, you know, rehab, pulling away from substance clinic in the United States. There should be, like, gallons of anemone in these detox places, in these people who are trying to get off of methamphetamines, who are trying to get off of heroin, or trying to get off of quick tobacco, or even alcohol, you know. This last year, I made an anemone glyceride for the first time. And it, it's turning out to be pretty decent. It's not as strong as this, but uh, I did 25% alcohol, 75% glycerin, and then removed the alcohol almost entirely from the glyceride by that double boiling method. Because I really wanted to have a nice alternative for uh, people who didn't want an alcohol extract. But it's still working to perfect the right solvent ratio. Um, but I tried pure glycerin and I didn't get anything. Well, the thing is that anemone, chemistry-wise, the moment you take five drops of anemone, it actually will take the blood that's been pooling up in your trunk and push it back to your extremities. So, like, physiologically, that's one way it calms us. Because a lot of anxiety is a form of shock. A lot of fears are types of shock. And shock has a diminished blood to the extremity type of event going on. So there is a physiological chemical reason that is distinct of what an enemy does that actually assists in this treating. Because when we, so I had to learn to redefine what, what, I had to learn to find, I had to look at shock and the definition of shock and realize that fears have shock that you hold for long term. Anxiety has shock definitions that you hold for long term. Chronic illnesses, diseases, incurable diseases, or diseases where you've been ping-ponged around to all the doctors and they don't have a question for you. There is levels of shock in so many aspects of our daily life. And since this is a medicine that physiologically treats shock by pushing the blood back out into the extremities, I realized, wow, there's more aspects to shock in more diseases and illnesses and in more in anxieties and traumas than I ever realized. That's why an enemy is working so well. Shock actually caused slow killing with people with anxiety, with people with depression, with people with fears and traumas, with chronic illnesses. There is a level of shock that is present in so many aspects of our life that we never really redefine shock. In fact, that this physi physiologically, chemical-wise, pushes the blood back out into the extremities is an amazing thing why it works for anxiety and traumas. And so, this is a fabulous medicine for PTSD. Daily, one or two drops here or there, more drops. Each person's going to find their navigating dosage, but to bring them home. So I started to coin a phrase, like, I believe there's a thing that leads to diseases and illnesses and traumas and anxieties that I never really thought about. We have our physical body. And as I got older and started working on my heart and started like feeling more spiritual, I believe we have a spiritual body. And then I actually finally, as a reluctant Capricorn at the very end, acknowledged my emotional body. And, uh, and you know, and so it's like there are, and still working on the emotional body. Um, they're not tangible to me, you know, but, um, but they do exist. They are real. The spiritual body definitely the physical body definitely, the emotional body now definitely. How fragmented are we collectively and individually? We are fragmented as individuals to some degree. We cannot help, but I cannot help to believe that we don't live a daily, we wake up fragmented. Part of our journey of coming home back to the natural world, coming our, back home to spirituality, and coming back home to better eating and emotional body and the heart, everybody's talking about, heart rocks and heart space and heart this and heart that, but so much of this is like, I was like, wow, we're all working on diminishing our fragmentation that we all carry around individually in our own ways, you know, and that you cannot live on planet Earth with the 
beauty of nature over there and the Mordor, the Morency copper mine and driving in his vehicles to get here and pumping gas and knowing about Standing Rock, knowing about this politician here, this, pol this war here, the famine there. How can we live in this terrarium? How can we live on earth and not be slightly fragmented? And how much does this affect us? And how much of this does it, it, does it affect us, but we don't even want to, can, can't even find a way to rally around and acknowledge this? I, mean, I carry an enemy here in this little pouch, down at the bottom of this case, some anemone there, some calm and clear, which is an enemy and wild oats combo. I mean, I got it scattered throughout my med kit. Ha 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 